We're at Masterson Station Park. This section was planted as part of a Reforest the Bluegrass project in the year 2000, so this is about 20 years old. Before this forest was here, you can look at old aerial photographs. It was nothing but open ground. When I was in college, we were the second least forested county in the state, Fayette County was. And these magnificent trees that are now having a chance to grow is really cool because it starts building, like it just builds an appreciation of nature and wild spaces and why they are so important. About 80.5. Virginia creeper probably has 5%. I've been working with undergraduate student intern crew um, this summer to do some surveys at reforested bluegrass sites, try to get an idea of what they look like and the kinds of ecological structure and function that they're performing. Right now I'm at 11.3. We're collecting uh, tree diameter, uh, tree height, and species. then I might have to shake the tree a little bit so you can find the actual top of the tree. So this is a merit hypsometer, and this is what we shoot through the forest at the trunk, at the base of the trunk, and the top of the tree. It does a little bit of trigonometry, I believe, and it uh, gives us the height of the tree. We throw out 10 grids Woo! and sample the percent ground cover of different um, plants. I was okay at plant ID at the beginning of the summer. Pokeweed, aster, there's some winter creeper, false strawberry, wild strawberry, and there are a couple of violets in here. The amount of different like grasses that we can just find in one small square is pretty astonishing. Um, but now that I've had a chance to go out and really like grind on it, I know that I am now better equipped to go out and pass that knowledge on to other people. You know, we just walked through the, the planting that was done in 2000, and here's a, a 2019 planting. This kind of provides varied habitat. We've got these tall grasses and, and short trees for now. Um, there's particular bird species that like that. There's other kinds of wildlife that like that. Over time, you know, hopefully this will develop into a, a more mature um, forest and, and provide uh, other kinds of benefits. We work with the University of Kentucky on a number of different projects, um, but this project that we're, we're meeting about today, looking to give us some data for our reforest sites. We've not really had the ability to do that much in the past. I'm really interested in reforested bluegrass sites from a research perspective, from a teaching perspective, as living laboratories because they're really accessible. It was a great relationship to strike up with the students and Dr. Senna to come collect this data and it's uh, you know, mutually beneficial for both of us to have a forest here you know, in the city limits, you know, don't have to go out to Heisel Park or Raven Run, but he can send students out here to do research and you know, silviculture projects. That just kind of pop the leaf off and it has a little, like it looks like a little dot right above it that screams white ash. So, you know, when I was a student, field work was, was crucial for me. Um, there's a lot of things that you can learn in the classroom. There's a lot of things you can learn in labs. Um, but when you actually get out in the field and and you have to you have to look at the grass and, and tell what kind of grass it is, or you have to work with a, a field key to key out a particular species of aster. Like um, those are just those are ex that's a, that's kind of experiential learning that you can't really duplicate in a classroom environment. I was in here sampling water quality as a student when this first when I was in school at UK. A lot of the surveys that we've done this summer, I found different. Uh, deer, we saw mink at Veterans Park at one point. Um, there's been a lot of like little foot tracks that we've been able to tell to, some foxes here and there. So now we're trying to figure out how we can work, uh, how we can work together and make, put forests in places where people live. I grew up in the era where it was like, cut a tree down, put a concrete, makes it look prettier. Uh, and I think, uh, Growing up during that time frame, uh, people started realizing the horrible mistake they were making. And I really wanted to be part of that opportunity to, again, reforce, reestablish some basic forests here in the city. And when I was in college, we were the second least forested county in the state, Fayette County was, next to Bourbon County. We are working to increase uh, tree cover canopy. And so we have 
20 years worth of forests that have popped up over the city. Walking in there sometimes, you can feel the difference in how much cooler it is on a hot day, not only because of the shades, but it also, you know, it just helps knock down heat islands, which again, if you live in a large city like I used to, that's a very important thing to understand. A couple hundred years, we've had pretty rapid uh, urbanization and just like carving out our, our peace for like people to live and places for industry, but we're starting to see that we're fragmenting our ecosystems and we get a lot of benefits from those. I feel like it's my calling to make sure that we do as much as we can as soon as we can. That it's just important for me to like feel like I'm a part of like this change and it really has enabled me to expand my horizons with what I want to do with my career anyway. But to have these kinds of resources in the city and to have students that are interested in studying our urban forests, it's really important and I, I love that this is offering that opportunity. I look forward to, to continuing to work with these sites. I think there's lots of other interesting questions we could ask. It's going to be cool to see how all of these trees grow over time. <laughs>